Tonight on The Weather Guide. It's been three weeks since Hurricane Michelle slammed into the Texas Gulf Coast, shutting down the refineries and chemical plants along the Houston Ship Channel. Gasoline rationing is in effect nationwide as prices approach $8 a gallon. Man, I'm waiting in line like everybody else. Can you just give me time to put it in drive? Pay attention, pull forward. Why don't you get back in your truck and I'll be on my way no, before look at you this. get in trouble. Everybody in this line. All these what? people no, are waiting for you to get gas. Everybody's waiting in line. Let's go. Everybody's waiting in line. That's right, put your camera away. Get in your car. Hurricane Michelle is now officially the worst hurricane disaster in U.S. history. This category five storm with sustained winds of more than 180 miles per hour poured into Galveston Bay at the mouth of the Houston Ship Channel, killing more than 2,300 people. And the president has declared a state of national emergency. Hurricane Michelle is just the latest giant hurricane to inflict catastrophic damage on the upper Texas coast. Carla, one of the major Gulf hurricanes of this century, began a general west-northwestward movement towards the Texas coast. Airports closed to traffic, hangars bent and twisted. The damage was universal. Skyscrapers popped out windows in the high winds, raining down glass. Huge evacuation, the biggest in U.S. history. Jams and a lack of fuel along evacuation They, they found some more bodies in, in that area, is that right, in that flooded area going house to house? For those of us living on the upper Texas coast, we see a major hurricane on average about once every 15 years. The problem is, in the lull between these uh, big storms, we tend to forget how devastating they can be. We tend to think, well, we made it through the last one, why should I worry about the next one? Right now, the 17-foot seawall here on Seawall Boulevard, you can see the water is going over the top of it, and it's very treacherous. We can't in 2008, Hurricane Ike rocked Texas with a near direct hit on Galveston, sending a 10 to 15 foot storm surge onto the island and the western end of Galveston Bay. We got lucky with Hurricane Ike. Uh, we were very fortunate that it did not land where uh, they had predicted it to land. We dodged a bullet on September the 13th, 2008. If it had just been a little further over, uh, then in terms of all gas production, refineries, jet fuel would have been uh, affected you would have felt the impact, not just on the coast, not just in the state of Texas, but throughout the United States. The Port of Houston and the Houston Ship Channel uh, has been an economic engine for the region going back to the 1840s. It's truly a, a major artery for the most important economy in the world. Of all the ports in the United States, this port is the only one that exports more than import, I think by approximately 9%. From an infrastructure perspective, the Houston Ship Channel is a major transportation and logistics hub. And so this is an important downstream artery for uh, the energy industry, for the entirety of the country, and you can argue for, for the hemisphere. In the Houston region, there are uh, over 500 chemical plants. Many of those are located along the Houston Ship Channel. We are essentially the chemicals and plastics manufacturing center for the United States. And, and probably by 2019 or 2020, we will produce more refined products and petrochemical products along the Houston Ship Channel than anywhere else in the world. We've got 132 plant sites located along the Houston Ship Channel. Uh, it's got an employee base of about 27,000 direct employees and probably a couple hundred thousand contractors that service the industry. The petrochemical industry is uh, a lifeblood for the national economy. My understanding is that a quarter of the nation's petroleum product is refined in this region alone. 27 percent of the gas 60 plus percent of aviation fuel, 80 percent of the military grade fuel. When you start talking about natural gas production, you're talking close to about 35 percent. When you factor in refineries, national implication. The impact to the chemical industry in the event of a category three plus storm would be incalculable. We are not just impacted in the, on the Gulf Coast, but the entire United States is, is adversely affected. You could possibly put four to five feet of water inside all those uh, specialty chemical complexes. 
which would virtually shut down those complexes for anywhere from 18 to 36 months. You know, when our refinery is shut down for some closure in the ship channel, gas prices immediately go up on the East Coast. Gas would go to seven or eight dollars a gallon. Uh, there would be gas lines again like we had back in the 70s. It's just basic economics. If, if we uh, were producing less crude, less refined products, less plastics, the price would go up and it would uh, trickle throughout the entire economy. Now what would airlines do um, uh, when they can't get fuel? What happens to the price? What happens to the price of airline tickets? What happens when the military can't get fuel? If we as a nation were to see an extended interruption in that fuel supply, um, the military would be, uh, would be very concerned very quickly. We have plants that produce pharmaceuticals and medical supply products, and we have uh, plants that produce automotive and construction supplies and everything in between that. So there's not a part of, um, of factories and manufacturing and consumer goods in the United States that wouldn't be impacted. Once the storm gets through, you've got recovery. You've got to get back in. You've actually got to get the plant back up and running again. And it takes humans to do that. Those employees have a lot of other things on their mind, understandably. Their family and their home. And so uh, the, the, the human factor side of that is significant. If people can't get to work, then it affects the tax base. It affects the production. It protects all the goods and services that, that we provide as a region. Hurricane Ike is a $30 billion event. We've gotten almost nothing. From a local standpoint, we've done a lot. But from a federal standpoint, we've done nothing. When you look to our friends uh, to the east, whether it's in Louisiana, New York, New Jersey, they were more than fully reimbursed. New Orleans has a levee system around it. We don't have a levee system out here protecting our area. It was $15.5 billion to build a system around New Orleans itself. They protected 340,000 people. What we're trying to do here is protect 5.5 million people in about 6% of the gross national product in the United States of America. The biggest killer in a hurricane is the surge. Probably three quarters of the total damages in a hurricane is due to storm surge. The idea is very simple. You stop the surge at the coast. You don't let it get in the inland waters. The coastal barrier system would be an, an idea, an ambitious vision to protect uh, the greater Houston area, the ship channel, residents of Galveston Island um, for the better part of six counties from a, a category three plus storm. Well, the coastal spine is an extension of the seawall built in the early 1900s. It will extend along the coast with a hard structure but covered with sand and seagrass so you won't even know that there's a coastal barrier there. Bolivar Roads is the critical part of it, where the Houston Ship Channel comes between and comes from the Gulf of Mexico into Galveston Bay. What we're looking at now is approximately 850 foot wide floating gates that we can close in that period sometime before the storm comes ashore to prevent the pre-surge from coming into the bay. In addition to that, you're going to close off the balance of that with sluice gates, which prevents the, the high tides, basically, from coming into Galveston Bay. The Netherlands is a prime example of how you can accomplish this. They have big gates that protect them. They have barriers that protect them. They put it together. They have a coastal spine, just like we want here. They close those gates and use that barrier 26 times, and it's worked every time. So we know the engineering is there. We know there's a process that works. And I think what we need to do is say, look, we're gonna get proactive. We're gonna spend a little bit of money up front, but we're gonna save a lot of lives, a lot of families with children, a lot of properties, a lot of industry, a lot of jobs. It's a huge opportunity, and I hope we can take advantage of it. For a city like Houston that innovates in ways that um, that Texans have always admired, whether it's in the energy space or the space industry with NASA, you know, I, I think that this is doable and we can do this. Either we're going to make the investment that can prevent huge losses, or we're gonna be short-sighted and think that we have plenty of time and then wait until it's too late. And literally, you could be spending $100 billion to replace the Gulf Coast. It's gonna require everybody to lock arms and be on the same page. Uh, from the local level, to the counties, to the state, 
and of course the federal government. We think that this is the time to now inform the public, get them involved, and get them in support of the plan. Help protect our families, our property, our businesses, and our nation's economy against the fury of the next monster storm. Contact your national, state, and local elected representatives and voice your support for the Coastal Spine.